Gotham Knight, the show for people with daddy issues. That's not me saying it, that's the cast. Alternate title would be just like, Dad Issues. Dad, 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 Dad Issues. Dad Issues. Dad Issues. Dad Issues. <laughs> questionable choices. And one thing we can all agree on is that the writers of this show definitely have issues. We start with a gang unloading rocket ammunition with explosive projectile. And maybe it's just me, you could have just written rocket. Although thinking about the target audience of this show, maybe it is better to spell it out. But it turns out to be a ground-to-air missile. And for some reason, Geordie LaForge wants it. And we could have had Cyclops from X-Men, but I went with Geordie LaForge specifically, just to make him a bit more diverse. But the thing is, they celebrate about their new purchase. His crew drive off, leaving the leader of the gang on his own. And he gets confronted by a tiny little high school girl. Although it is nice to see she followed Batman's advice from his office and only bought a single Batarang with her. So that'll be useful, I'm sure. You lost a little girl? Yeah, I'm looking for my Batarang. It's on your chest, love. I've walked around my house looking for my glasses when I'm wearing them. It's easily done, I don't begrudge you that. The thing is, it turns out that she thinks this is smart. Have you seen it? She still thinks she's being smart. When she grabs it, throws it, and he gets a little tiny point of it in his shoulder. Oh, I'm sure he's really afraid now. Batman came out of the shadows to invoke fear and dread in his enemies so they would be afraid of the symbol of him. There's no terror here, she just confuses you by how thick she is. Oh, there it is. Okay, I take it back. She's actually got two more Batarangs with her on top of each other just to make sure they're extra difficult to grab in a fight. Either way, he pulls out the tiny little blade and they go and have a fight and I'll try and get you a picture of the height difference between these two. This is quite a good image because that is the top of his head and that's his chin. At best, she comes up to about midway on his chest. Now she's punching him in his stomach and obviously it doesn't really do very much, but somehow she's not getting absolutely annihilated like she should be doing. He grapples her. So she decides to do this move and I don't even know what this is meant to be, to be honest. I'm going to run up your chest to try and get you into a chokehold when I'm about the size of a gnat compared to you. I'm not sure this'll work. That went about as well as I'd expect but not for a Gotham Knight show, so I'm surprised she didn't just choke him out. The issue is she's defeated. She knows she can't beat him in a fight. So she gets out her zipline gun, fires it at him, which he grabs, and then he starts reeling her in like a fish. So she's holding on, skidding along the floor, getting pulled towards him, because at the end of the day, she's a 15-year-old child who's about half of his weight and a third of his size. What does she think she's doing? And at no point does it cross her mind just to let go of it and run away. <laughs> Sees the main electric conduit behind him and thinks, I've got a plan, I'm going to murder this man. Shoots the wire into the electric so now all of the mains voltage is going through both of them and somehow he gets electrocuted and she doesn't even though they're all holding onto the same metal bar. So he undergoes what would essentially be the electric chair, 100% would be lethal, collapses and for some reason she is absolutely fine even though she's holding the same metal tool that he was. He has literal smoke coming off his body because he's been cooked from the inside. Meanwhile, she's fine. I don't know how. Maybe her little tiny thin leather gloves protected her from mains voltage. Seriously, in this show, your guess is as good as mine. But she has just straight up murdered a man. And what is her reaction to this brutal display of violence and murder? Well, the show gives us this. That's right, she's smiling about it. She's actually proud of killing this man. <laughs> Either way, the police turn up and she runs away. They find his body, and I should say, he's not actually dead. He just should be, after all of the electricity went through him. And as far as she would know, he has been, because that's what you would assume. So it is weird then, when she returns to the rest of the evil people in the room. You okay? I'm great. And is that happy about murdering a man? She has no idea if she's murdered someone in cold blood, and yet this is her response. Oh, Batman would have been proud. You went up against the leader of the mutant gang? Mm, more like he went up against me and lost. Love, I could go up against you, let alone a guy who's about six foot eight. You can't even intimidate food which has been put on the top shelf. Not unless it sees you coming with a step ladder anyway. But she brags about how she took down the mutant gang leader and they have a quick discussion about how she became Batman's sidekick. This was all covered in episode one and two, and they're repeating it again because they think if anyone watches one episode of this show, they're definitely not sticking around for the rest of it. So I guess each week we're just going to recap everything. <laughs> but essentially, Batman was fighting the mutant gang. They threw him off a roof, so the mutant gang beat Batman, and she dragged him to safety, which is why he trained her to become a sidekick. And if you missed the underlying message of that story, it is that the mutant gang leader beat Batman, and yet he couldn't beat her. Such is the power of the female crime fighters. But Turner is reading Batman's journals. Anything in there that can help us hunt down the Court of Owls? A lot of conspiracy theories. Really? You've got the journals of Batman, the greatest detective of all time, and yet you think what he writes down are uh, uh, just wacko conspiracy theories. They're probably not true. Don't you think the greatest detective of all time? 
may have fact-checked them first before he decided to write them down in his journal. No, no, you're right, Turner. I'm sure you know best. You are, after all, 15. Batman probably should have been asking you for advice. He may have not died to the Court of Owls if he had. The Joker's daughter starts winding him up. Doesn't it hurt you that he handed your entire legacy to this random little girl over there rather than you? Don't you know why he didn't pick you? And it's like, yes, this was explained in episode one. He didn't pick him because he wanted to keep him safe. He wanted to keep him protected from everything. I don't want you to die is a pretty good reason for a father to have. Especially as Batman died himself. It proves he was right to care. <laughs> yeah, and you know his reasons. He didn't want you to die! But at this point, the show writers, who are also the Batwoman writers, decide to double down on the exact same things that got that show cancelled. It's a brave tactic, let's see if it pays off. Because the news is reporting that the mutant leader got captured. And the mayor has this to say about it. On my order, the brave men of the GCPD have captured the degenerate leader of the mutant gang. All of that is factually correct. The GCPD did arrest the leader of the mutant gang. Of course, despite that being factually correct, it doesn't stop the Batwoman writers moaning about it later. First, though, we've got Castiel confronting him and just dumping the story of things which have happened between episode two and three, and how the blonde's boyfriend from episode two admitted to hacking loads of banks, which carried a five-year prison sentence, has now been let off by the mayor. But it got hurt, and the money was stolen. Right, because it was donated to your campaign coffers. It's good old Two-Face, I mean Harvey Dent, confronting the mayor about wrongdoing. And this entire scene would carry a lot more weight if we didn't know that guy was innocent in the first place, especially when to any sane person, he never should have admitted to it in the first place. How big a contribution did Lincoln March make to your re-election fund? I know that's an accusation, Castiel, but with that face, it just makes you look jealous. In this show, Castiel looks pissed off in at least 50% of scenes. Back at the school now, and the blonde criminal hacker decides to wake up a random woman from Trig on a desk. GCPD captures mutant gang leader. The press always gets it wrong. Based economy. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. I'm Stephanie. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't care. Look, I was sleeping, you woke me up, and then told me your name. Can you kindly piss off? You're Carrie. I know who I am. The better question is, why should I care who you are? Another case of a man taking credit for a woman's work. Oh, there we go. I knew this was coming, and that may explain my rather short response to her earlier questions. What we have here is the Gotham Knights writers, who are the Batwoman writers, stealing from their own hit show. Another case of a man taking credit for a woman's work. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. That's right, the Gotham Knights writers are now copying the script from Batwoman. What could possibly go wrong? Oh. Maybe if your last show got cancelled, don't copy the same ideas which got it cancelled in the first place onto your new TV series. There's learning from your previous mistakes, and then there's doubling down. Although when you fail upwards to a new show, I can understand why you don't learn from your mistakes. I don't know what you mean. Playing Dom, it's a very smart tactic, and it's one with you that will be immensely believable. Turner filled me in on your extracurriculars. Why? Why is Turner telling you about my secret identity? It was stupid enough that I, as Robin, told someone my secret identity. Why is he telling other people? It's a secret identity, the clue's in the pissing name. Of course, she can't say any of that because she's supposed to be keeping it secret, unlike Turner. Can't be easy, picking up the bat mantle. I have no idea what on earth you're talking about. I'm a 15-year-old child. Of course, I'm not picking up the bat mantle. You lunatic would be my response. Let's see how she does it. The way you're catching extra Z's in the stacks. Wait, the entire evidence you have to back up your theory is that you've caught me asleep in a library. This is supposed to be a hyper-intelligent super hacker, and her evidence is that I'm asleep at school. It's not like students are renowned for falling asleep at school, especially ones who in the first episode were at late night parties. Oh yeah, I had, I had a really late night last night. I tell you, I am hungover on all. I, I don't even know what you just said. I can barely focus. I don't care if the cops took credit. Why are you admitting it to this random blonde that walked up your table and gone, are you Robin? Yes, actually, yes I am. You caught me sleeping on a table. I'm red-handed, so there's no way I could get out of this scenario. You caught me sleeping in the library. Of course I'm a superhero. What other explanation could there be? And even when you do admit it, ask her why Turner's going around telling random blondes about my secret identity. I just wish Batman was here to see me take him down. Batman would tell you to shut your pissing mouth and stop telling people about your secret identity. You know, I knew Bruce a little. He'd be proud of you. Firstly, you didn't know Bruce as well as she did, so she should know that as well. Secondly, I never met him, I've only watched this show, and I'm ashamed of both of you. If I was Batman, I wouldn't just be ashamed, I'd be embarrassed. But at that moment, her boyfriend turns up, who should be behind bars for five years at this point, and he isn't. We know from the previous conversation it's because his father bribed to get him out, but nobody in this conversation knows about it. Also, this guy can clearly see that she's sitting at the table. There is no way that she can physically vanish from this room without being noticed. They can already see her, and yet... Um, 
Carry. Oh, it's a magic trick. <laughs> Either she's the Flash, the Invisible Woman, or can teleport. Those are your only three options in this one. The chair didn't even move. Maybe there's a fourth option. She's hiding beneath the desk. Although if they do check underneath it, that would be rather embarrassing. Okay, she's not beneath the desk. I didn't know that was coming. The show just got me in checkmate. What can I say? What's more surprising? To see you in the library <laughs> or to see you not behind bars? That's how little she actually cares about him. She went and committed federal crimes by hacking into a load of banks that would have got sent down for five years. He took the fall for her and she wasn't going to say anything, do anything to help him. He just turns up and she's like, oh, I'm surprised you got out of that. I thought you were going away for five years. That would have been nice. A little more excitement, gratitude, guilt. I don't know. General human emotion might not go miss here. This guy was going to give up five years of his life for you, love. Thanks again for that, by the way. And that's all you're getting, is it? Seriously, I know you're in a library, but maybe a little bit more public display of affection might not go miss. Also, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Thanks again for that, by the way. Because she is thanking him, but he went to the police and said, oh yeah, you know all those banks hacks? I did that. I can't help that just... It really reminds me of something, actually. Another case of a man taking credit for a woman's work. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. So you hated him before, but you're thanking him now. I just want to get the rules down right. Is it okay for him to take credit for your work if you've been a complete moron and are going to get in trouble? So you essentially want him to take all of the consequences and accountability for your own actions, but none of the glory. I mean, honestly, I'm just surprised you managed to do all of this within about 30 seconds of each other. Generally, when someone's a hypocrite, they manage to maintain the facade for a little bit longer than 30 seconds. Of course your dad got you off. Pays to be a march. Is now really the time to be complaining about corruption when you hacked into several banks and were going to go to prison? It's really difficult to maintain the moral high ground when you were already coming from hell. But it turns out the reason he's here isn't to get any kind of gratitude offer because we all know better than to expect that. No, instead there's a Founders Gala that he's going to and he needs a plus one because he's going to be incredibly bored and so he wants to drag her along so that she's bored alongside him. I know you hate those parties. Yeah, if there's one thing that women hate, it's going to incredibly rich, fancy and luxurious parties for free. She'll have to dress up in designer fashion and jewels. Honestly, I don't know how she's gonna stand it. This'll definitely be an incredible sacrifice worth him going to prison for five years for. You said yes? Brody lied to the police about hacking the banks. For me, I kinda owe him. Look, I owe him. If I don't go to a party and bang his brains out, that would be incredibly rude. We've even got the looking down doe eyes over it. Yeah, I'm with Brownie on this one. I mean, you got her into trouble. How did Turner get into trouble? She was the one that hacked a load of banks. He said, can you find out who set us up? He didn't go, can you hack every bank and get caught and sent down to prison, please? This isn't his problem. Besides, you were the one with the back computer and the supposedly incredible hacking skills, and yet you got caught by the most incompetent police department that is Gotham. There is one person to blame here, and it's got long blonde hair. And okay, he's got long blonde hair, but the longer blonde hair. I highly doubt that me splitting a cheese platter with Brody is your most pressing concern. You could get the mutant gang to yeet you off a roof, and I wouldn't be concerned. I don't know how she's done it, but she has become the most annoying character in two scenes. <laughs> Although maybe it's because she hasn't really done anything in the series until now, and the moment she starts doing something, it's like that, though, no. You are a horrible person, and you deserve to go to prison. <laughs> but he starts talking about the Court of Owls, and apparently they've been killing the Waynes for a hundred years. The issue is, the first Wayne they're supposed to have killed, drowned in a sewer when he fell through an open manhole cover. Now it's weird enough that a big hole in the ground doesn't have a manhole cover over it in the first place. And as for the sewer bit, I don't know enough about them to fact check whether that's even possible, and I really don't want to know. <laughs> Is a sewer just a completely full tube with no air pockets at the top of it? I don't know. And I'm not gonna look it up. We'll just leave that to the imagination. <laughs> Witnesses said that he was last heard screaming, the owls are in my house. To be honest, now I just have more questions. <laughs> a load of people saw a guy walk into a hole voluntarily on his own, did they? Because <laughs> when you hear the story, like, okay, a load of people probably shoved him down it, forced him down. But now there's apparently witnesses that just saw him walk along and fall down it. Next thing, the owls are in my home. Why is he just shouting that as he's walking down the street? Bit weird. And secondly, even if he was, all of this does seem to be an accident if he just walked into a manhole cover voluntarily. At this point, it just sounds like his own fault. I don't care if they're in his house. Doesn't seem like they had anything to do with him falling down a hole. That can't be a coincidence. If it's not a coincidence, you're gonna have to explain to me why he walked voluntarily down a hole. Yeah. I'm glad you agree, mate. So, 
What now? Well, personally, I would fire all of your scriptwriters and get new people that didn't make up this trash. But I'm a guy in this front room and not CW. And I most certainly wouldn't want to take credit for a woman's work. No, when it comes to the CW, you can have all of that credit yourself. Well, I know what the world's greatest detective would do. Can't solve the last murder, go back to the first. Okay, but Batman existed and therefore he's already thought of that and gone and investigated that and then wrote in his journals that he couldn't find anything. Are you telling me that a 15-year-old child is going to find information that Batman couldn't? I have a horrible feeling that that's what's gonna happen. Maybe looking through his cold case will help us prove they killed my dad. I mean, I have absolutely no idea how that would happen, but okay, MMO fetch quest number three, please. Let's see how they're gonna do that one. I hope it's not the same as every other episode that we've had so far. If you could get your hands on the original case file, maybe we could find something the police missed back then. Oh, right, get your hand on the missing case file which is totally different than a journal or a gun. Are we gonna have to steal something? I think that's where we're going with this one. If the original case file wasn't in the GCPD basement. You know what that means? We're gonna have to break into Wayne Tower. Sorry, no, I'm on autopilot. That was in episode one and two. This time it's entirely different. This time we're gonna break into the GCPD. <laughs> How has your TV show got formulaic when we're only on episode three? We could steal it. How? Why don't you leave that to the thieves to figure out? He did. You said we could steal it and he said how? Leaving it to the thieves to work out. He didn't give you a plan. You're supposed to be 15, not mentally deficient, love. Just in case you don't understand how English works, if someone asks you how, they want you to tell them. Why are you looking so smug as if you've just got one over on him with a really smart comment? <laughs> no, seriously, how are we going to break in there? You you just leave that to me. No, I, I want to know before I put my life on the line and potentially get sent to prison for five years. There is absolutely no way this group of criminals wouldn't get caught in under 24 hours. This symbolizes the emotions of every single viewer at this point of the episode. What on earth is going on? I have no idea. I just know somebody should be fired. But we cut over Gotham to an airship. A rocket gets fired from the ground and takes it down. Chemicals causing widespread fires that at this moment have not been contained. It's a good job they've got a really old television in front of them because it does slightly hide the absolutely terrible fire effects they've just added over the screen. <laughs> Even when it's paused, you can see the really badly cut outline that they've done. <laughs> this is the kind of fire effects I'd put in a thumbnail. <laughs> but why did they do this? Well, they say it was in retaliation for you capturing their leader. You arrest us, and we will absolutely annihilate your city. The GCPD takes the credit, and then the mutants take it out on everybody but you. Hey, what can I say? Just be thankful a man took credit for a woman's work, eh? I'm not sure if Batman would be proud of you, but I sure am. Earlier in the episode, she tried to murder a man in cold blood. No, Batman would not be proud of her. She also has a habit of telling every single person she ever meets of her secret identity. I don't think he'd be proud of her at all. But hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, and so she's going off to solve the mess and take down the mutant gang that caused this problem to begin with. Of course, it does go downhill when this happens. Just listen to the audio. I appreciate the offer. I really do. But you have enough to do trying to clear your names. What was that? Look, I know TV shows go back and add in lines, but you could at least try and do it with the same microphone. These two lines don't sound remotely similar. I appreciate the offer. But you have enough to do trying to clear your names. Where did she record the second one? In a bathroom. There's enough echo in the second one she could have been doing karaoke in the shower. Either way, they argue about her going out alone, he wants to follow her to help her, and she says, no, no, I need to do this, I need to do this, you stay here. Maybe we treat the mutant gang to a bit of that teamwork. That's the first sensible thing you've said. They will definitely break if they have to spend five minutes in your company. Turner, it's too big of a risk. Is this about me getting caught or me getting hurt? I mean, do we have to choose? Can't we have both of them, Turner? Can't both of them happen? It's about your dad. Based economy. See, she doesn't care either. Personally, I don't care, but your dad did, and so I've got to follow his wishes. You can't just walk into the GCPD. You can if you're in a cop uniform holding these. Yep, these thieves' master plan is to just walk into the police department. Don't worry, they've got a piece of paper. I'm sure they'll be fine. Nobody recognizes you. You don't have any ID. You don't know your way around the building. You don't know any of the security codes. No, don't worry, you've got a piece of paper. It'll be fine. Look, it's got a barcode on it and everything. This is foolproof. Some of my best work. Look at this incredibly complicated form. I mean, it's been done on a laser printer, you've got a header there, and you've written in some handwritten notes. I mean, at this point, you might as well just fake a Picasso. I believe in you. Just a couple of hours in the Gotham Academy art lab. It looks like it, which is why it's believable that it's your best work, actually. But his sister keeps saying, are you a fool? You can't go into the police department. We need you to stay here. And then for some reason, the Joker starts sticking up for him. Maybe it's time for you to recognize that he's a total badass. I'm sorry, what? Maybe it's time that you recognize that he's a total badass. That is the only expression that that comment deserves. Because you realize we have eyes and can see him, right? But it turns out she was lying all along because quite frankly, no one would believe that. In fact, she just wanted him to do something. 
While he's in the police station, she wants him to steal something for her as well. And in episode 3, she is still the best actor in the show, even though she's not really given much to work with, and she really manages to nail the creepy facial expressions, whereas the rest of the cast are just generally creepy. On the other side of town, we see people arriving for the gala, a limo arrives, for this guy whose name I'm never going to remember, and his parents. Turns out for some reason, she didn't go with them. I don't know, she was left a bike over here or something. <laughs> it's not exactly the most chivalrous way to enter a luxury party, is it? There's a little exchange between them, the mother's friendly, the father isn't, and it's treated as a big secret later on. But this is a party for the rich and famous, the most powerful in Gotham, so they're obviously going to be the Court of Owls. And it's hardly the biggest leap of logic that his parents are going to be part of the Court of Owls. But if you want an example of the deep intellectual conversation that happens in this scene, well, you can just look at his face because that's how I felt the entire time. Here's a sample. Well, they must be so proud. Brody told us you're on the fast track for MIT. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't care. I couldn't put it better myself, Spike. But the mum compliments her and she palms off the compliment onto her boyfriend. For some reason, no one mentions that he was going to go to prison for five years. This is the same kind of pace and characterization that John Wick had, except they did it with talent and this one didn't. There were lots of little comments that I'm sure they thought were really deep. Oh, the father's putting down the son. And it, it didn't carry any weight at all. I didn't care about these characters when they entered the scene and I certainly didn't care about them afterwards. At the warehouse now, and Robin has decided to take on the entire mutant gang on her own. She descends down from the ceiling on a rope, and the only thing I wished for is that she had a third green eye on her forehead, and so it looked like Splinter Cell. Unfortunately, this is still Gotham Knights. Now, strangely in this, they do seem to have improved her goggles. The light looks far better from this angle, unlike the previous ones, where we could just see the LEDs were beaming straight into her face. <laughs> this angle at least makes it look as if it's shining outwards. Of course, the improvements to her goggles don't last, because she does this, Yep, I've come down on a rope in the middle of a warehouse, and I'm only going to check that way to see if I can spot any enemies. No heat signatures detected. Have you considered looking in the other direction, love? It might help. Guess not. We're just going to lift up our goggles and reveal our secret identity in the middle of an enemy gang base. Are we still sure that Bruce Wayne would be proud of you? Because I don't think he would be. <laughs> Especially when this happens. She starts creeping through the building. How predictable. Whoever would have thought that in the other half of the warehouse that I didn't even bother to check, maybe there'd be an enemy there. So she puts her hands up, turns around to show the mutant gang member her face and her secret identity. The stupidity at this point is almost physically painful. Now he can ID you, your friends, your family, everyone you've ever cared about. You have put every single person that you know in danger all because you couldn't keep your goggles down for 20 seconds. And the show thinks that this solves it, but this doesn't solve it. Turner comes in and smacks him over the head, but unless he's given the guy amnesia, it's too late because she's already revealed her secret identity. And it gets worse. It gets a lot worse because it turns out this was all part of her plan. <gasps> Turner, what are you doing here? I'm saving your life. Put your goggles down, you stupid bint. Waiting on a thank you for stopping him from shooting you? Based economy. I never thought Turner would develop a spine in this series, but at least there's some kind of vague, ghostly image of one. One, I had two. Now I can't question him to find out what they were planning next. One, that's a pickup line, which is why we're only looking at the back of her head as she says it. Two, that's the most ridiculous plan you could ever heard, as you're showing him your secret identity. You're not questioning him. You're removing your ability to be a superhero for the rest of time when the entire gang knows who you are. So thank you. Kick her out of the pissing building. Don't get snarky with me, love, after I've just saved your life and you have the IQ of a spoon. Okay, it looks like his spine is now vanished into the ether already. That didn't last long, did it? As he looks around guiltily, instead of putting her in a place. But she starts questioning him about how on earth did you even find this warehouse in the first place? He's like, well, duh, the airship came down here and so I just went underneath it where the rocket came from. It's not hard, love. But there's loads of warehouses and he nailed it to this specific one because it didn't have lights turned on and it had a padlock on the inside of the gate. Apparently that stood out compared to the rest of the warehouses and his dad had taught him that game. Spot the odd one out. When I was little, my dad and I used to play a game. He called it Sore Thumb. I mean, this is a CW show. I don't want to know what any game is called Sore Thumb. Thank you very much. He was teaching you situational awareness. The shame he didn't teach it to you, love, then, innit, really? Didn't even check behind you when you're coming into a warehouse. And don't pretend, oh, I was just trying to question him when he put a gun to the back of your head. Because you didn't know, he wasn't just going to shoot you in the face. Well, the back of your face. But we find a van in a warehouse and for some reason think that's incredibly suspicious and check in the back of it. Looks like he put those girls to videos. I just can't figure out why he would teach them to me if he didn't want me to use them. Yeah, it was probably, I might die and I'm trying to teach you survival skills. I don't think this is complicated or deep or even the basis of a show's plot. You being able to protect yourself would be a backup plan in case he died. 
And he did die, so he was right. Either way, we open the van and find it contains loads of milk. Oh no, apparently this is uridium oxidate, but those are 100% milk churns. Don't worry about it, the audience won't recognize them. It'll be fine. These are from Ace Chemicals. Or the local dairy, we'll never know. Also, do you really have to shout out these are from Ace Chemicals when it clearly says so on the label? And they realize, <gasps> blowing up the blimp. It wasn't just about the blimp. It wasn't meant to destroy the chemical plant. It was to cover a robbery. It was to cover the fact that the mutants were robbing the place. Thanks for spelling that out for me, mate. I'm sure the audience couldn't have worked that one out for themselves when they saw that it was a robbery. But with that, he picks one up and shakes it and realizes it's empty. Whatever they were going to do with all this stuff, they've already done it. We return to the gala now because Gotham Knights hates fun. The rich are rubbing elbows with the rich. Harvey Dent is talking to the parents, who most certainly are nothing to do with the Court of Owls. I don't know how you could think that. It's not obvious. Have you met my wife, Rebecca? After those house parties where you put the car keys in a bowl, I think everybody's met your wife, Rebecca. No, I don't believe I have. Okay, except Harvey. That's probably because he drives a Prius. But they talk about whether he wants to be mayor or not. I don't really want to be mayor. You should be a better liar. The father walks off. If you hope to be a politician in this town, better learn how to lie better than that. I don't know if you ever heard a politician talk, but they're generally terrible liars. Everybody can tell because their lips are moving. And we get this from the mother. I have to disagree with my husband. I think you lie quite well. I almost believed you when you told him we'd never met. Turns out she went for the Prius car keys after all. All right, Castiel, I preferred it when you looked angry at every scene. I don't even know what this expression is. What were the director's commands for this one? Make it look like you banged his wife. Over to the GCPD now, and we've got the master criminal walking into the police station. Apparently all it takes to break in is a uniform and a mustache. It's incredibly believable. Yeah, for some reason when they wanted a disguise, they decided to mimic the 1960s. This looks like the opening shot of adult entertainment as he knocks on the door and goes, hello, love, I hear somebody needs to be handcuffed. But he's got a problem because this is evidence, not records, when he's after records and so his form doesn't work. And so the entire conversation with this guard is, you need to go down there, down the hall, and I'm not joking, I don't know why this scene exists. Every single scene in this police department is entirely useless to the plot. But for some reason, it's in the story anyway. Does this look like the records room to you? That's basically the plot of this entire episode in one sentence. I don't know what else to say. But there is a problem when he leaves to go to records and this happens. Hey. Uh-oh, we're supposed to think he's got caught. No, don't worry. It's worse than that. They're not teaching anything over there, Somerset Rough Coffee. Coming to another man's shop asking for stuff. Little juice of the bean goes a long way. There is absolutely no way that whoever wrote that line has worked in a job in their entire life. This guy sits at an evidence desk for eight hours a day with people constantly coming and asking for things and changing things, and he wants you to bring him coffee every time? How hyper is this guy? If every single time anyone wants him to do his job, they have to bring him a double espresso. At this point, he must be so caffeinated, he's like the Flash. He'd just sit there at his desk twitching, going for marathon runs around the hospital. He's got so much energy before he crashes. I'll remember that, sir. Don't remember that. Do not bring coffee to everyone. Anytime you need to ask them for anything, they'll die. I'll remember you. Next time, just send him the tart and paint. It'll be quicker and make a lot more sense. Hey, dude, can you go and fetch some elbow grease for me? Either way, back at the school in their secret pace that absolutely nobody knows about. Turns out they've walked through that school with the milk churns of empty chemicals and they go up to her saying, what on earth can these chemicals be used for? So we have the chemicals and we have the diagrams of a bomb. And remember that because if you had the blueprints for a bomb, you'd think you'd know something about it, but apparently not. Any idea what they're up to? She's going to say she does, but she 100% doesn't. And you know that if you just listen to her for five seconds. Not much you can make out of those. They're both soluble, so they wouldn't even cause a reaction. I mean, you've got these two chemicals and they're soluble, so obviously not going to cause a reaction. Soluble just meaning dissolves in water. Doesn't mean they won't have a reaction just because they dissolve in water. Did you think soluble sounded really scientific and would actually confuse the people at home? Did you not realize what soluble meant and so you thought nobody else would? At this point, the only thing they should ask is, what does dissolving have to do with anything? Unless they were put under pressure and aerosolized. Oh yeah, that changes everything. I mean, them dissolving in water, that won't do anything. But if you turn it into an aerosol, spray that water over a place and suddenly it's incredibly dangerous. The stupid thing is there are plenty of chemicals which are entirely safe on their own and only when mixed are dangerous. You could have just used those. Instead, we had to say, no, it's because they're water soluble, mate. Nothing that dissolves in water can be dangerous. Can't happen. It looks like they're making some kind of poison gas bomb. She said that after she looked at the diagrams. She'd already worked out their entire plan and then looked at the diagram. Oh yeah, it's, it's all here in it. <laughs> I don't know why I was guessing. I should have just looked at these first. To gas the city? No. For it to work, it needs to stay concentrated like in an enclosed area. So if you spray in a wide area, it does nothing. It's only dangerous 
when it's concentrated, like in its liquid form. When it's in the liquid, it will be incredibly concentrated compared to when it's in a gas. But no, the liquid's safe as anything. You don't have to worry about the liquid. The liquid's fine. Only when you spray it into the air does it become dangerous. The GCPD. No. Yeah, we're just gonna knock that down straight away. Don't worry, everyone. Turner's made a guess. No, you're an idiot. Of course, that's stupid. You didn't even think they've got the gang leader there. Why on earth would they want to kill him? Oh, Turner, you moron. You're coming up with all these stupid ideas every time. Now that the cops have Vernon in a cage. Yeah, you should have known better, Turner. Obviously, that's a terrible idea. Luckily, we've got the Joker on hand to tell us the right one. I know what my daddy would do. He would make a statement. Yeah, thanks for that, love. That was really helpful. My dad would definitely blow up something that mattered. That really narrows it down. Luckily, she does actually go on and eventually get to the point. Little overpriced fish eggs. Founders Gala. Yeah, it really wasn't that complicated after all, was it? Look, we need to send a message. Oh yeah, all of the rich and powerful people in our city have gathered into one place. Maybe that's what they're targeting. Look, all I'm saying, Turner, is Batman would have solved it about half an hour ago. Yes, you are on fire today, little bird. Not particularly. You did spell out exactly what it was. She just said the obvious thing so the audience didn't have to work it out because apparently you think they're really stupid. But Turner's really worried. Stephanie's there. I don't care about anyone else that's there in that building, but Stephanie. Meanwhile, Stephanie is surrounding herself with the rich and famous. Two virgin mojitos. You said it was ironic before, but nothing is ironic than giving her one of those. <laughs> Really? Because this one tastes pretty slutty to me. Hey, I wasn't going to say anything, love, but as you did, I think I'm off the hook. I mean, let's face it, he's been thinking that for a long time himself. I'm not sure adding underage drinking to our rap sheets is a good idea. You got arrested for hacking into five banks, and now you're like, don't underage drink, that'd be a bit naughty. I'm just not sure you've got your priorities straight here, love. You're about to have dinner with my parents, trust me, you are going to need it. Especially if they know you've got a criminal record for breaking into banks. But all I'm saying is if it was my son, I would be judging. And thinking what she thought about that drink. <laughs> Although she doesn't seem to have a problem with it now. But at that moment, she gets a phone call from Turner. You have to get out of there. The mutant gang's about to do something terrible. And he's not wrong, because what happens next is a single worst plan I've seen anyone carry out. We have the entrance to the gala with lots of armed guards all over the place. And the mutant gang thinks the best way to attack that is this. Yeah, they start shooting out the lights all over the place. Not any of the guards. The spotlights, which only shine onto the building. So they knock all the spotlights off the building, does absolutely nothing for everybody. They can still see you because they're shining on the building. So now the guards are all alerted and you've not taken any of them out. Congratulations. But it gets worse because you may be thinking, oh, they shot the lights. That's what Batman does because he wants to preserve life. Yeah, we'll see about that. Because the mutant gang drops a grenade on the floor. And I don't know where it comes from. It seems to fall out of this guy's pocket. <laughs> And it does explode twice in the footage. Can we please stop cutting to a point which is further back in time than the original cut was? It's really annoying. But with that, I don't know why you shot any of the lights. Why didn't you just lob a grenade first when they weren't aware of you? Okay, that's the third explosion we've had from a different angle. And each time it reset the explosion. We actually saw that same explosion three times. Editors. Do you not understand how time is supposed to work in a cut? Either way, everyone panics because there's an explosion gone off outside. The lights get cut. And they decide to waste a load of ammunition shooting the ceiling. I was hoping at least one of the chandeliers would fall from the ceiling just for lulls. Luckily though, second in command, Georgie LaForge turns up and takes control. Here to provide the evening's entertainment. And fix the warp core. Do you all like games? Because I have one that I think you'll love. Okay, calm down, Jigsaw. You're supposed to be Georgie LaForge. I will run out of nicknames if we keep combining characters. Very simple game called What Does This Button Do? That's something he's been asking his wife since they were married. That's actually why he's got the visor on. It's the tracking software in an attempt to desperately find it. But we jump forwards in time without them telling us how much time has passed to the news reporting on the event, which is lucky because it's the only way they would know what's going on. They all come up with a cunning plan that they're going to enter and somehow defuse the entire situation without even knowing how. We were kind of hoping you would join us. You know how to disable a bomb. Yeah, I remember that line as well because that doesn't make any sense later on either. Because later on, Blondie gets involved. She's only supposed to be a computer hacker. I don't know where bomb disposal expert came from, but... That's what we're gonna have to put up with, unfortunately. Look, it turns out in the CW universe, if you don't have dangly bits, that does leave a lot of weight that somehow goes to your brain in order for you to be so much more magnificent. Yeah, step one, call the bomb squad. Based economy. I knew it had to happen eventually where one of you actually had a good idea. They don't have the instruction manual. We do. No, but they are the bomb squad. They've spent their entire life defusing bombs. They're going to be experts at it. 
your 15 year olds and have never done it before. Also, if you've got the instruction manual, you would assume that you know exactly how to defuse that bomb. And they don't. It turns out that this supposed instruction manual doesn't help them at all for the rest of the episode. But we're just going to mention it here as if it's a major important plot point. Don't worry though, we'll forget about that later. So they come into the plan to enter the building through these secret underground tunnels. But you would need someone to open the door from the inside. You're telling me you can break into all these high-tech security vaults and things? But you can't go through a door in a basement. Yeah, this is a super strong reinforced door. It can only open from the inside. I can't do anything about a basic lock. We'll see the door as well. It's a very basic door. We can break into safes, no problem at all. But a door, no, no. I've told you, my sonic screwdriver doesn't work on wood. Why would I risk my life to save a bunch of people who don't give a damn about me? Honestly, I wonder that same thing about this entire show. I've watched this for three weeks. I still don't care about any of them. I'm just waiting for a real Batman villain to turn up and kick their ass at this point. Same reason we saved you from the Talon? Because she's the only one among you that could act and your series would definitely have died without her? I, I don't know. You realize it's impossible to guilt me into anything, right? That's actually two base comments from two different characters in the same show. What's happening? Fine, you'll get to punch a bunch of mutants. Oh! Should have led with that. The only thing that would have been more exciting is if you said she could punch you in the face as well. So at that point, we cut back to the GCPD for absolutely no reason whatsoever. He's trying to leave with the files. The guy who demands coffee off everyone to do the basic duties of a job stops him and goes, look, there's a crime. I need you in the crime. Go over there and do the crime. All hands on deck, Rook. Yeah, it was a thrilling scene. I'm really glad it was kept in the show. So he goes off and enters the briefing room and you may be thinking, oh, this is a rookie. He's not supposed to be there. I'm sure something dramatic is going to happen and he's going to have to use his wit and intellect to get out of this situation. No, nothing happens. This entire scene is pointless. Literally nothing happens while he's at the GCPD ever. He just sits down at a desk and that's it. Oh, he does send a text message, which is doubly thrilling. So the crew arrive at the underground tunnel and there's a shot of the 100% impenetrable door that can only be opened from the inside. We can get into lock vaults at Wayne Tower, but we can't get through that. That's made of wood. I'm not joking, it's literally made of wood. Old wood. You can even see how old it is from the paint coming off it. I mean, I like Doctor Who, but we don't have to copy the sonic screwdriver rules. We really don't. I think even in Doctor Who, it was meant as a joke more than anything else. But Robin goes off to patrol the entire building on her own and find the bomb. Well, the chemist among them says the bomb is probably in the HVAC system. They beat up this guy as they enter the boiler room. They do it off screen so you don't have to see any of their choreography. And I think we're all appreciative of that. Normally, I would want to see the action scenes in TV series. But with this one, I've learned my lesson. And there we find the bomb. For everything that's about to happen with this bomb, remember, they've got the blueprints for it and would know everything about it by this point, or should do. They even use that as the argument why they shouldn't contact the bomb squad. Of course, we're about to forget all about that now. Everything that's happened previously in this episode no longer exists. And of course, having the blueprints and knowing all about of the bomb, it will be Turner that makes the most stupid decision immediately that makes him look like a complete prat. We gotta get this thing out of here. Yeah, dude, just walk over and pick up the bomb like you've never seen a movie before in your entire life. Wait, wait, do you know? Tilt switch. Of course it is, because we've all seen a movie before and know those exist. You move it, Mercury closes the circuit. Uh, what does that mean? Turner, I know they're trying to humiliate you in every single scene, but you have to read out the lines that do make you look like you're completely mentally deficient. It's a Mercury tilt switch. I repeat, have you ever seen a movie before? How can you not know what connecting the circuit on a bomb means? It means the mutants are smarter than we thought. I'd be incredibly surprised if the mutants were smarter than I thought they were considering they can only be as smart as the writers. Can you move this thing? Boom. Yeah, that's not smarter than I thought they were. I gathered that from, it's got a tilt switch. And also from me watching any movie with a bomb in it. Then we have to disable it here. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Nobody ever would have worked that out on their own. But back upstairs, the gang are stealing everyone's jewels. Might as well while they're there. Watches, necklaces, it all goes in the bag. And obviously this is Gotham Knights. We all know if you're part of a secret organization, your watch just perfectly identifies you. So this is actually a pretty big deal because the Court of Owls is stupid. So they go and get everyone's watches, including Harvey Dent's. Geordie LaForge is negotiating with the mayor to get his leader released. I don't care how much red tape you've got to cut through. There's going to be a lot more red down here if you don't. Do you think we could just skip to that bit? Because that actually sounds a lot more entertaining. <laughs> I'm glad he agrees. Of course, Harvey doesn't agree with him. If you give in to them, you are sending a message that every single person that wants anything from you, they just have to do this and you'll give in. On the one hand, yes. On the other hand, if every single rich and famous person dies in your entire city on the same night, I'm not really sure how that's going to help. And it's not as if Harvey has any counter plan. He's basically just whining. Trading one mutant leader for the rest of his gang. This place is surrounded. They're not getting out of here. Well, you mean except for that door down in the basement, which is made of wood. Are you telling me you're in a building that you've got surrounded? 
that you don't even know what's inside it. Really not the brightest GCPD, are they? But now it's time to disarm the bomb. And to do that, we've lined up Dumb and Dumber, because if I wanted my life to be in anyone's hands, it definitely wouldn't be theirs. Sorry, it would be theirs. Obviously, they're the smartest people at this entire group. One's a hacker who hacks into one thing and got immediately caught. And the other is somebody that thinks if it dissolves in water, then it's definitely not dangerous. We've got a couple of Mensa members on our hands here, lads. Don't want to get bomb all over your Valentino. It's a May nickel. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't care. And the first thing they bring up is fashion designers, so I have complete faith in them. Is a mutating algorithm that deletes itself once complete. I'm sorry, what? A mutating algorithm that deletes itself once complete. You're gonna have to explain to me why you'd use that instead of a timer. Presumably the algorithm solves itself in a certain time. Just use a clock, love. It's easier. Mutating algorithms are designed to work on container elements and perform operations like shuffle, rotation, and changing the order of things. She's basically said it's an algorithm that changes the time on a clock. Why not just use a clock? Uh, what, what happens when it deletes itself? If you say it deletes you, I'm leaving. It deletes us. Oh, guy, I'm gonna... What happens when the time runs out? Our time runs out. This isn't smart. You're just changing the order of things slightly. And it's the most obvious line everybody thinks when he asks the question in the first place. I just search for the frequency that'll deactivate this thing and there isn't one. Yeah, because that's how that works. Okay, so I got a bomb and I just scanned all the frequencies to see if I could deactivate it. How did you do that? The only way I can think is if you actually just sent out all of the frequencies. But of course, it's going to be more complicated than a frequency because you transmit data across a frequency. So unless you need the deactivation code, you would never know. But even if it was just a frequency, do you want to know what you do by sending out every single frequency? You detonate the pissing thing, which she kind of acknowledges. Just wanted to activate it. How come it's not activated then? Unless you're saying you passively scanned all of the frequencies, in which case you wouldn't interact with the bomb and so you would never know in the first place. This is like the seven layers of hell and we just keep descending further down them. So it's meant to turn on and never turn off. So the bomb's going off no matter what? That is literally just what she's told you, which you then repeated back to her in different words, presumably because you think the audience couldn't grasped it from the first time. That'd kill the mutants along with us. I am so glad no one plays a drinking game of every time they state the obvious taking a shot because there is no way you were to be able to survive an episode. Unless they planned ahead. Of course, at that point, the Joker finds out their actual plan. They've got gas masks. Whatever happens, they plan to detonate the bomb. As soon as their leader gets released, they plan to detonate the bomb. They put on the gas masks, everyone else dies, and they leave, sending a message and getting what they want at the same time. I mean, it all kind of works right up until you realize that in the future, nobody will trust them around their word at any point in time, and so this only works once. It doesn't seem like a smart move for a gang that wants to stay in a city permanently. How much time do we have to defuse it? 42 minutes. If this show goes on for another 42 minutes, I'm going to have a seizure myself. And that's if the GCPD doesn't release the main leader before then. Spoiler alert, they do. So luckily it doesn't go on for 42 minutes. So they try to warn the GCPD, do not release him. Because as soon as you release him, they're going to kill everybody. This leads Turner to come up with a plan that I have to speak to Harvey Dent, who wants to arrest me. But for some reason, I think he's not going to arrest me this time. You gonna risk that? A lot of people will die if I don't. I have to say, mate, you don't sound too bothered about it. <laughs> a lot of people will die if I don't. I mean, if that's all the enthusiasm you've got for it, I don't really know why you care. There is always the option of leaving. But he comes up with a plan. He dresses as Georgie LaForge, points a gun at Castiel, and then drags him out the room, taking him backstage, and tells Castiel about the bomb. As soon as that guy gets released, he's going to bomb everybody. Don't release him. Their leader is released. The mutant gang are going to set it off. That's right. We're just repeating the exact same story that we just had in the previous scene to a different person and calling it entertainment. Although this is from the same show that repeats everyone's backstories every single episode, so I'm not sure why I'm surprised. That's their exit strategy. Kill everybody here. Escape in the chaos. We know. We just heard that in the last scene. We haven't already forgotten. Thank you very much. But you dress like one of them, and now you're telling me that you know what they're planning to do? Is it the flat cap? Is that why you don't trust him? Because quite frankly, I wouldn't blame you if it was. How? You need to trust me. You really want me to trust you when you look like Geordie LaForge wearing a farmer's cap? I mean, seriously, you're either about to milk a cow, clean a chimney, or set up a boy band, but he Either way, I'm not about to trust you. You're a fugitive. Who really has- That's literally the definition of fugitive. Somebody who runs. Yep, you're a fugitive who gave themselves in for arrest. That it doesn't work. <laughs> fugitive literally means somebody who's running from the police. You asked me before if I knew what that coin they found on my dad meant. It's the symbol of the Court of Owls. We know that. Why are you repeating things that the audience already knows? They're a secret cabal that's been pulling strings in Gotham since the city was founded. Yes, which you've told us. 
every single episode so far. Stop recapping your own plot every single episode. This is insane. Watching this show is insane. I will give you that, Castiel. But then again, you are an angelic being, so I can understand you having a little bit of insight. The court killed my dad, and now they're trying to kill me. I don't know. Maybe they saw the scripts in advance, mate. I, so I wouldn't blame them. But like, this show cannot be allowed to exist. It's too awful. We are past Batwoman 2.0 at this point. We can't trust anyone. Then why trust me? Because my dad did. I think that was meant to be really deep and emotional, and I felt nothing, because I'm kind of hoping the bomb goes off. But while they're having their hard to talk, we've got Dumb and Dumber desperately trying to set off the bomb and failing. They try to cut off the outflow of the aerosol, stop it from releasing the gas. Yeah, they've got different contradictory plans on how they can disarm the bomb. One wants to stop it aerosolizing, and the other one thinks that's stupid for an absolutely insane reason. And if the stainless steel can't contain the pressure, just turn a chemical bomb into a regular bomb. The stainless steel can definitely withstand the pressure, because it's already doing it. If you cut the valve to the aerosolizer, then you're just leaving it in the state that it's already in, which it can withstand, because it's already withstanding it. What happens if we leave this liquid in its liquid state? Nothing. Nothing changes. I suppose you have a better idea? I don't know why you didn't point out how stupid her comment about yours was. Yeah, not doing your idea. Oh, congratulations. You can tell she's blonde because she's absolutely amazing. Not only can she hack computers and get caught immediately, but now she knows how to defuse bombs. Nobody knows why. Right, because Gotham Academy is renowned for its honors bomb defusing classes. Nope, just basic science. Basic science is not defusing a bomb, you lunatic. If I was a writer and I had to write about a bomb, I'd at least learn about one. We're better off disrupting the power source to the valve that pressurizes it. That's your solution? Cut the wire? I mean, that is generally how people defuse bombs. What's next? Bang on it with a hammer? I don't know why you put that thought in her head. She might actually do that. Do you know who you're talking to? I would not be surprised if she did that. In case you cut the primary, this thing hotboxes half the city's power players. I mean, okay, I was on your side, but now you're telling me she's gonna blow it up? I'm on hers. Come on, love, start cutting those wires. Let's have a party. Oh, uh, and us. You didn't have to add the cherry on the cake. I was already on board with her plan. But at that moment, she gets a call on her earbud. Apparently, Joker and Robin have gone around the building and taken out every single member of the gang except the ones in the main room. They've done this secretly, without getting caught and without alerting anyone in that room, because they're just absolutely amazing. But as they're doing that, Castiel is desperately trying to convince the mayor, do not release this guy. Of course, it doesn't work. Both of them are vying for the same mayorship, and the mayor doesn't want to do it, because I'm literally against you. Why would I take your advice? It is at least a logical part of the script for once. So with that, the gang get what they want, the leader is released from GCPD headquarters, and the 1960s cop is there to witness it, and send them a text message telling them he's about to happen. He also, for some reason, looks like he's about 12 in this shot. I don't know what it is about that uniform, hat, and moustache, but it makes him look even younger than he already did, which is particularly weird. <laughs> so they get the text message. They obviously panic, as as soon as the gang finds out about that, they're going to detonate the bomb they're sitting on. So for a brief moment, this series was really looking up. With the ratings of this show, I'm sure the CW wanted to cancel it after three episodes. So this was basically their perfect opportunity. Because at that moment, Geordie LaForge finds out the leader's been released, and he goes to set off the bomb. You've just seen him raise his arm in the air to push a button, and now for some reason, he's not going to press it for quite a while. You see how long he had to press it before Castiel managed to charge him? I'm going to bomb all of you! Are, are you- are you gonna run at me any time? Oh, you are running. Hang on. Oh, yeah, it was a bigger distance than we thought. What are you gonna say? About five or seven? Okay, I'm gonna wait. Oh no, he's hit me and stopped me detonating the bomb. Either way, they struggle around on the floor in front of everybody, fists are thrown. They're both desperate to either push the button or stop the button, and all of this time, there is an AK pointed at Castiel, and for some reason, it never fires. I think you're supposed to think that the leader's in the way. As you can see from this shot, here's the gun, here's Castiel, the leader isn't in the way. I have never fired one in my life. Even I could make this shot. But no, this guy's gonna sit there, staring at him, not firing, with a shower cap on. There's also a guy on the other side of the stairs who has an even better angle on Castiel. He doesn't fire either. This is the guy we were watching who had the bad angle. This guy's on the other side, on Castiel's side. Perfect clean shot, never fires. Because they're waiting for this moment, you see. Robin comes in and pulls them both off. It really is a good job they read in the script not to fire when they had the opportunity. Now, for some reason, the rest of the gang run up to the bar and just stand there staring at everybody. They don't do anything to help. They just stand on the balcony looking out at the world as Castiel gets kicked in the face and the other guy gets the detonator. Whatever you're gonna do, do it now. I mean, he could do something himself, but as he can't be bothered, he just tells Dumb and Dumber to do it instead. So one of them goes off to shut down the valve. Meanwhile, Blondie... Okay, I'm gonna disable the pressure valve. Too late. Wait, no! I'm just gonna cut one of the wires at random. That'll be good. Luckily, it was the right one and none of them die. Of course, if this was real life, it would have definitely blown up because if you're using a hacker to defuse a bomb, 
whose only achievement in life is to have hacked one bank and got immediately caught. You're definitely dead. Unfortunately, they're not. So he starts spamming the button, which gives Castiel the ability to knock him out in front of everybody. I'm sure that'll do wonders for his mayoral possibilities, especially as everyone's cheering for him in the background. Meanwhile, back with Dumb and Dumber. What the hell was that? That was a complete moron cutting a wire at random that she had no idea what he was about to do. Because for some reason, she thinks being an electrician is science. Excuse me? But now this is a tough scene, because both of them get incredibly annoying very fast, and she starts it with that. Some people say it's not what you say, it's the way you say it. But with that, it was both of them. No, the part where you took a chance with my life. Which you still have. Out of pure luck, because you had no idea what you're doing. You cut the wire without knowing what would happen. Because I knew what would happen if I didn't. She even admits, I had no idea what was going to happen when I cut that wire. How to lose an argument 101. Yes, we're alive. Out of pure luck. That ain't a winning strategy for defusing bombs, love. You still have your life. Yes, until next time when you would never really do it again. You do realize the only way you win this argument is by being dead. No, I win this argument by the fact that you just admitted you had no idea what you were doing when you were cutting wires on a bomb. But with the arrogant and egotistical way you delivered that line, I don't think you can physically understand how stupid what you've just done was. My way would have worked, only you didn't give me a chance. I'm gonna cut her off mid-sentence, because that is a very good point, and it's followed by an extremely stupid one. My way would have worked and you didn't give me a chance. Excellent. Hers would, because nothing would have happened, the bomb would have stayed exactly the same, it was a great plan. Up until this point, Blondie, completely wrong in every way, shape, and form. Definitely should be ejected immediately out of the building and never spoken to again. What comes next? It doesn't make any sense, and I don't know where it's come from. And it starts with this. I didn't go to some fancy private school, but that does not make you smarter than me. I'm sorry, what? Nobody mentioned which school you went to. Nobody mentioned being smarter than you. Just because you've got a chip on your shoulder the size of Brazil doesn't mean that everybody else does. It seems like you're projecting here, love. I never said that. That's an excellent point. You did when you cut that wire. No, she didn't. Cutting a wire doesn't mean I'm smarter than you because I went to private school. Just because you're paranoid, dear. This isn't your daddy's game show. I'm sorry, why are we bringing up game shows and daddy? Is this your daddy issues again, dear? Dad issues. Daddy, 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 daddy issues. issues. The only thing I can make sense of anything that this character is saying is that one of the writers has this chip on their shoulder and this is how they see the world. That a load of people went to private school and they despise them because they think those people look down on them, even though they probably don't. And it's probably just them projecting onto the world. And for some reason, they've projected that onto this character as well. None of this has been set up. It doesn't make sense for either of these characters, but for some reason we're saying it anyway. Now why don't you go back to your cozy bedroom on the top floor of your mansion? Easier to look down on me from there. What on earth is going on? And what are you talking about, you crazy bint? Who is saying anyone has looked down on you? I'm not even sure how often you've met before. I mean, I look down on you, but that's because you're a character in a CW series. People inside the CW series, you're all on a level playing field. Although I have to say, her expression is how I feel whenever I watch this series in the first place. The only thing I take from this is you probably should have just called the Bomb Squad. You went from, we shouldn't call the Bomb Squad because we have the diagram so know how to defuse it, to, I'm going to randomly cut wires and somehow still think that's better than having the Bomb Squad. A CW show always has problems. This is more like a big gaping chasm. But after that, we get a news report about how the leader of the gang has escaped, that Harvey Dent is now taking the credit for disabling everything, because to them, it looks like he stopped the bomb going off. You know what that means. Another case of a man taking credit for a woman's work. Although there is a problem. Mr. Dent, we didn't find any explosive devices on the premises. What? I mean, honestly, I'm not sure why you're surprised. This is a CW show. The writers might have forgotten to actually write this part into the script. Just, oh, we forgot the bomb even existed. But I did at least think at first that the Gotham Knights had taken it for some reason. So we save everyone's lives and Harvey Dent gets all the credit? Oh, sorry, love. I was way ahead of you. I've already played that meme. If you want to complain about it some more, I can play it again. I am not fussy. Look, he can have the credit as long as we can have the shiny stuff. That's a far better attitude. I knew I liked this actress. Everyone else is like, Harvey Dent is a bigot. And she's like, yes. But I have nicked his watch because she gets the bag of all the criminal's loot and pours the jewels out onto the table. All their watches, their necklaces, and everything else. Say, this is so wrong. The Galagas were victims too. Now that, that's not what I'm thinking. I'm just fantasizing of a different parallel dimension where that bomb went off. Of course, there are the watches here and the least most surprising reveal of all time. Oh look, they've got owls on the back. Never saw that coming. I really don't know why you're surprised. 
when you literally had a room full of the most rich and powerful people in the entire city. You know, the kind of people that would be able to lead a city for a hundred years. I thought you guys were supposed to be smart. So they go through all the watches and find several more. But of course, because it's a random bag of loot, they don't know which watch belongs to which person. I mean, you could always just return it to people, and when they claimed their watch, you'd know who had it. But hey, maybe I'm jumping ahead of myself and they'll actually come up with a brain cell between them by episode four. 200 people there. Which means we have no way of knowing who they are. Because they certainly don't come up with it in this one. At that point, the cop returns, minus his moustache, and he's got the documents. Hopefully there's something in here that'll lead us to them. I mean, that was literally the point of the entire episode. Thanks for reminding us right at the end. How short an attention span do you think your audience has? You literally told us this at the start of the episode. We go to Robin punching a punch bag. Gently. <laughs> yeah, that'll teach it. She's really angry that the leader got away. She did try to murder him at the start of the episode, so I can kind of understand why she's a little bit upset. Not easy to say it, but I gotta admit, I'm jealous of you. May not have been easy to say it, but it was very easy to predict. You know, Robin, I've always been jealous of you. You're just so amazing. You're so much better than I am. <laughs> Honestly, Turner, I don't know why I saw that coming. I just had this feeling that CW was going to humiliate you once again. I see why my dad wanted you as his Robin. You're just so amazing. You're so much better than I am. Of course he wanted you over me. I just wish I'd gotten to see that side of it. I don't know why he didn't let me, but he took you instead. Are you two gonna hug it out as he cries next? So young when my dad died. So I'm jealous of you. Daddy, daddy. daddy. Oh, I could see why you call this show Daddy Issues, seriously. Oh, but my dad wanted you. Well, at least you had a dad. Oh, please, can we rewind time to when we were about to blow up? At least then I had one last little bit of hope for the universe. Can we find out the extra item that Joker's daughter sent the guy in for? It was the Joker's card from the first episode. I'm not sure why you wanted that from Evidence Locker. I thought you hated him. Oh, I do. This is just so I don't forget how much. Daddy, 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 daddy Issues. Now, as it turns out, the cast definitely had a point. And who could have gathered? that the writers of Batwoman and Gotham Knights could project this effectively. When every single character is exactly the same with exactly the same problems, maybe the writer should look at themselves. Cullen, you are the bravest person I know. You don't know many people, do you? Do you only know the people in this room? Because even out of that, I think you're wrong. <laughs> you include anyone outside that room, you're definitely wrong. I learned that from my pain in the ass sister, so... I don't even know what this is meant to be. Ask her what she thinks of private schools, that'll be good. And with that, Harvey Dent comes out. No, I mean to give a speech to the press. I'm not referring to what he did at the Comic-Con. But he's giving a speech about how he's going to run for mayor as the mayor comes down out of the police station, gets into his car, and finds an owl coin on his seat. He realizes what's happening, tells the driver to drive, and realizes, oh yeah, the bomb was stolen by the court of owls and is now in his car. And we will let a new dawn of hope shine down on the streets of this great city. That would have only happened if the bomb went off next to the Gotham Knights. As long as they're alive, there ain't gonna be no new light on this city. They will only bring about darkness, pain, and misery every week. But either way, he starts vaping, finds out it's incredibly effective in a closed environment, and we get an incredibly creepy smile from him at the end. I don't know why this show exists. I don't know why the Batwoman crew got moved over to another show to repeat the same thing with the same lines and double down on the same idea. I don't know why they've got a chip on their shoulder about school. I don't know why, for some reason, we think cutting lines on a bomb randomly gives us the ability to then crap on the person next to us who actually knew what they were doing. I don't know what happened in this episode or why anyone thought it made sense. I don't know why you're struggling to go through a wooden door in a basement when you've been able to crack into safes until now. The only thing I know for sure is that the crew were 100% correct. The alternative title for this show can definitely be Daddy Issues as every single character has the exact same problem. And the only message I can get from that is that is a personal issue with the writers, projecting it out onto the world. Because if there's one thing I've learned in modern times, it's the people that have these ideas, and especially with the ones in Hollywood. It's always projection. But those are just my thoughts, what are yours? If you like the video, press like, subscribe, more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.